He is a Scotland and a Celtic legend, Mr. Scott Brown. I heard you were watching Manchester United last night. Yeah, for my sins. I, I love Brendan. Like, when I was there with Brendan, Brendan was unbelievable. He probably prolonged my career for a couple of years. She had some battles with him, didn't you? I really you? didn't like him. I don't know what it was. As soon as you think you've, you're done, you are done. Surely when Brendan's had enough, that's the job, job for you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. And our Sam is off sunning himself and topping up his tan. So we have the best caretaker manager in podcasts. Tim Sherwood is back. Welcome. How you doing? I'm good. We haven't seen you in a few weeks because Sam's not been on holiday for about a month. Hello, what's wrong with him? <laughs> I know, right? Not well. <laughs> it's nice to see you again. No, it's good. It's good to be back. Yeah, watching a lot of football. I heard you were watching Manchester United last night. Yeah, for my sins. Yeah, <laughs> how was it? Um, really, really dour. Poor. I mean, I can't dress it up any more than that. I mean, it was just, I'm being kind to him. You know, if you're a Man United fan, it's not good at the moment, is it? And certainly if you're a Man United player, it's not good. And I would suggest if you're an owner of Man United, it's not great either. But we'll get into that. We will. We will. Now, would you like to welcome our guest for today? Yeah, I'm really pleased. Um, I've never met this guy before, um, but it's good to meet him today. He is a Scotland and a Celtic legend, Mr. Scott Brown. That was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> always, a legend, mate. <laughs> always a legend welcome uh, scott thank you so much for coming and joining us much appreciated thanks for having me my usual question my usual first question is do you know each other but we've just worked that out although i feel like never met never bumped never into met. each other never but do know both of us love golf though okay so it's a match made in heaven okay i like it and i feel like if you'd have played in the same team you'd have probably really got on i feel like your styles i feel like you would have liked each other yeah, even if we played against each other, I think we would have liked each other. I'd have done your running. You could have done my ball playing. <laughs> you could play, by the way. <laughs> Don't put yourself down. No, it's, it's one of them. You know, you have um, different characters, you know, with like Roy Keane. I'll give you that example. Everyone thought we would always clash and we had some battles. But I think there was a mutual respect there um, that, you know, if I get away with one or he gets away with one, you get up and you get on with it. I'm not trying to get him sent off at any time feign injury, wouldn't do that. And I think Scott would be exactly the same as that. Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get on to you as a wind-up in a bit because I, I definitely want to get on to that as well. But um, can you tell us, what 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 are you up to just now? I always like to catch up. So um, you left Fleetwood a few months ago now. Yeah. So what are you up to now? Going to enjoy the festive period. Uh, it's not often that I've had the actual Christmas dinner, sat and enjoyed it in the house. So going to do that see family, uh, see a few friends as well and enjoy the festive uh, period at this moment in time. Are your family looking forward to having you at Christmas or are they just going to find it dead weird? I, I have been there, but I've not been able to be there the whole night, usually in a hotel or yeah. worried about coming back down the road and leaving early in the morning. So no, it's, the, the kids will enjoy it. It'll be good to see the kids wake up on Christmas Day as well. So in terms of management um, yes. and you, are you looking to get back in? Are you keeping your eyes open? Are you sitting by the phone? I'm starting to get itchy feet at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's good to have a, a little bit of time out to go on holiday and to chill and relax, to be perfectly honest. But at the same time, you miss it. You miss the routine. You miss the day-to-day. -day. You miss going in and seeing the lads and putting sessions on as well. And I, I miss winning games and taking the responsibility as well. I think the longer you stay out, the less your feet itch. <laughs> <laughs> when did yours stop itching? Ooh, quite or, soon. Or are they quite soon. <laughs> I don't know what I asked that question. <laughs> I, think that, I think that that's the case. I really do. I, 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 I wouldn't never say never. I would always want to go back in. And, you know, when you're around football people and you, and you, chat, you just love it. I love football. I love watching it. Um, like the attitudes, some not so great of players. Mm -hmm. Just dealing with different characters and um, and trying to put that, blend that chemistry together to make a good team spirit as a manager. But I think it's, there's some real negatives. It takes, it consumes your whole life 24-7. Yep. And I think Sam has said it many, many times and he's done it more than any of us. Um, and the more you enjoy playing golf and, and your family and, and, and it becomes... Don't be telling me this. It becomes, <laughs> in the end, it becomes a chore, but you you know full well even... Oh, it's stressful. You dip your toe, you, you, it's 24-7. You can't do it half-hearted. There's half, always somebody half willing to text you to say, look at this player, I wouldn't give you a bad player. Yeah. You watch him, you're like, yeah, sure, mate. Yeah. I've seen that before. And then you've got 
players texting you all sorts of time. I'm Alan doing this and that. And yeah. that. So no, it's difficult, but I actually really enjoyed it. I enjoyed being down there, having responsibility, having to deal with the stress, the dramas as well, but also want to win games and I've never known anything else except for being in football so that couple of months out has been it's been difficult but at the same time it's been quite enjoyable to go and play golf to go on holiday and to see the family as well Surely when Brendan's had enough that's the job, job for you <laughs> Oh yes Tim straight in <laughs> that, It has to be I mean who wouldn't want him what, what Celtic fan wouldn't want you as manager uh, I, I think you need to make sure that I've got a step way as well that I've I'm in a job and that you can go and show that you can go and win games because going to Celtic, it's the expectation levels. Mm. You've got to win every game. You've got to play good football, whether you play against Barcelona or you play against Aberdeen at the mm. weekends. You need to play in style as well and you've got to entertain the fans. And there's a lot of pressure at home as well because you've got 60,000 fans there week in, week out. And yeah. it, it is a hard thing, but at the same time, it's an unbelievable job. And for me, I had 14 amazing seasons there I enjoyed every single moment of it I wouldn't change that but uh, to go back and to manage uh, at one point yeah I'd love to do that but I need to make sure I, I earn my stripes hmm. I disagree <laughs> yeah I, I, I don't think it's that necessary I think for someone who've, who've got experience and knowing the club inside out I think he's far he's got far more credentials than a lot of managers I've seen come and do the job Oh, we take Ange out of that because he was a he was a success. Most people who manage Celtic are a success. You know, if you take Guardiola for instance, I mean, he managed the B team at Barcelona and he took the job and he was successful because he knew what Barcelona wanted. Well, the style of play. yeah, and he had an advantage because he had the best players. Yeah. But so with Celtic, Celtic, you, you know, you come you come first or last up there, don't you? Yeah. So I think if. If you get the opportunity, you have to take it. Don't oh, worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, he wasn't saying that, by the way. <laughs> you can take my train ticket up the road. <laughs> yeah. I'll come and be your assistant. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, would that be, would you? Yeah, 100%. To be fair, it is a great club and like, even Champions League nights and European nights and playing Rangers as well. It's a fantastic mm. experience for everyone and uh, I enjoyed and cherished my time there. And yeah. you, you never know what happens in the future. Um, uh, there's a lot of jobs around at the minute. Like, last weekend seemed to have be yeah. a, it seems to be crazy time now. Uh, do you know what? I've forgotten them all. Swansea, Stoke. Um, in the champ, there's a few in there. They all yeah. panic, don't they? You know, I'm it's that sure. time of the year, eh? Yeah. You see, January, we can go and bring, get a manager, let them bring some players in, and mm. hopefully now they jump start. But Oh, Burton, that was the other one, wasn't it? The weekend, Burton. Burton. Well. Yeah, they may as well league, in, league one. But no, there's always going to be jobs and there's always going to be managers in and out. But at the same time, there's a, a lot of managers that want the one job as well. So there's a lot of people fighting for the one. Only one in the Premier League, though, which is quite unusual at this stage. Yeah, definitely. Only Sheffield United gone. Yeah, I think it was the lo- one of the longest seasons they'd ever, we'd ever gone without a yeah. second in the, in the Premier League. Have you got um, aspirations like, or would you want to take any, were you, you interested in, is it the club more than sort of that no, league you, or? Um, I would never turn anyone down. I would always go and speak and see what was about. And I've been for a few interviews, I had the opportunity, a couple of jobs as well. And then I didn't think it was the right club or the right time to go in. But uh Hindsight, maybe should have jumped in because two, three months later, I'm still in the same position. So, no, I'll, I'll just wait and see, see what's out there, and then take the opportunity if it ever comes again. So, I want to get in a bit more to Celtic and to Scotland, but first of all, we've got a listener question. So, we always ask our listeners if you'd like to ask um, our guests, Tim, Sam, a question. It's always best to just tweet me, just find me on Twitter, and send me a question. And Gaz Miller did that, and Gaz Miller is asking a very serious journalistic question here for you, Scott. We, we like to get into the nitty gritty <laughs> on, on this podcast. Oh yes. Would you like to manage yes. Celtic? Yeah. <laughs> 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 there you go. <laughs> Even more in depth than really? that. Um, he wants to know about your hair. So apparently, you grew your hair out as a manager. Obviously, we can see your hair now. Whereas you used to shave it as a player. What was the reason for that? And he also wanted to add on that you're a legend. <laughs> it's a great question. Yeah. More just to have that look to intimidate people, and yeah, it seemed to work at the time. And I think for me is I slightly shaved my head when. 19 at Hibs and I just automatically went with it it drip dries it's nice and easy is that yours? this is all mine <laughs> do you want to check the greys? <laughs> don't be jealous come on don't be jealous Tim. <laughs> but it was during Covid and the kids went to me Dad have you got hair? And <laughs> none of them I've ever seen the oldest one's 12 he's never seen me with any hair 
I, I think I do. <laughs> I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. So um, let it grow for six months and it started to come through, and it's so thick. And it's would you say, shave it every day? Did you or every every other? couple of days? Then, yeah. Or whenever we're in a hotel, I'd shave it the night before the game, so I didn't have yeah, to. Yeah, you was it intimidating. Myself. Yeah, but it was. Yeah. It was more. You've gone all Sean Connery on us. <laughs> I'm just, at the same time, I am a nice guy away from the park. But as soon as I played, I always played to win. I, I would be horrible to people. I would yeah. try and set standards, and I would try and just win the game. And whether it was that psychological feeling that. They're a little bit scared of me. And, I, I and you got that. right into character. Yeah, I was good as soon as I went over, but it's part of my villain. You can be yeah. whoever you are, want for 90 minutes on that football pitch. Yeah. And then as soon as you came off it, you run really quick because there's a lot of bigger guys than what yeah, I was yeah. there. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I, I thought you just didn't have any hair. Like for your entire career, I just thought, because it was so short as well. Yeah. When I saw pictures of you managing, I was like, it's not. That's, Scott, not right. that's not Scott Brown or that's yeah that's not your hair yes but I, I love that the idea that that was that was you that was a conscious choice of yours to play into your character yeah but then I went into management role and I couldn't turn up with a skinhead when I knew I had a lot of hair so it was more that nicer look shall we say I'm not sure it's nicer look but what does your wife prefer uh I'm not sure. I think hair. <laughs> I never really asked her the question. <laughs> uh, I probably hair, but the kids prefer the hair. So I think that's the main thing. They want me to have hair and they want to see me do it in the morning. And uh, it's been a long time since I had to go and buy wax and stuff like that. Yeah. So. What about your managing that? Would you like to see your manager with some hair? I just pe- I think Pep actually doesn't have hair though, does he? But yeah. I'm not sure. I'm assuming you're being rude. Oh no, don't tell Maybe me. Maybe he's just that. in character. Hey, t- yeah. <laughs> Ten grand and he can go and get it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever consider shaving yours to look meaner? No, I, no, not really. Not really. I've, I had it shaved there a few times. It was. I used to go one extreme to the other. It was either a, like a cut crop or a, a stupid long cut, like. I don't know, what do you call it? Curtains. Curtains. Did you have curtains? Yeah, ridiculous. Oh, I need to Google I mind that. you in those curtains. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, I could probably go one worse. I had a red mohawk. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's not I was naughty. 18 and my manager at Hibs at the time were playing a cup final against Livingston. We beat Rangers and Celtic, quarterfinal, semi-final, Livingston in the final. No daft haircuts, nothing. We're going to win the game. All the lads, straight to the barbers. All got free haircuts for some local guy around the world. I got mine red mohawk. Within two weeks, dived into the swimming pool on holiday. It went orange. Did it? Yeah, it was really good quality. <laughs> Did you win the game? No, we got All right, yeah. No and, more mohawks. And the back page of the paper was me with a mohawk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Learn my lesson. Though. Learn my lesson. Yeah. I've shaved it off. Uh, you mentioned Hibs there. I'm going to go into another listener question, which has come from my brother, who is a listener, Darren. Um, and he's a Hibs fan. Oh, and therefore would like um, to know if you would ever want to manage Hibs. Hibs is a great club and f- for me, I-, I still go along and watch my kids play with Hibs. Uh, I try and watch them as much as I p- possibly can. Next year, Nick's doing a great job at this moment in time. And yeah, my name was thrown in at the time, but just before Nick came in. But no, I was at Fleetwood, I was enjoying my time. Uh, y- you never say never though, because the club means so much to me as well. I had five fantastic years there and I enjoyed it and I still in contact with a lot of people there. What did you learn in that short space of time at Fleetwood? Did you learn more how to do it or how not to do it? A bit of both. I think you learn what you do really well, as in like training-wise, what the lads like and not what I liked as a player. And you get a little bit of that understanding. But I'd also stick to my guns a little bit more on the way we wanted to play instead of other people telling us to play two up front and yeah. coming from upstairs. And I like four, two, three, one. I like the high press, getting after teams and yep. having that opportunity to get into teams in that high line as well. And we went to three five two, but we were good with three five two away from home in the bigger pitches. But we couldn't do that at home as well as we possibly could have. What personnel? Personnel, but also the pitch was tighter. Yeah, we probably didn't create enough. Uh, the wing backs ended up being more defensive minded than create creativity up the park and when we did put those wingers on we did score more goals so uh, mm. probably learn mistakes from that and there's always going to be mistakes being a young manager and I was always first to admit it and I'm not going to get everything right yeah. I'm not always going to get the team selection right as well but uh, I was honest with all the lads as soon as they came into my room and that, that's a, the main thing for me is honesty with the yeah. personnel and if they've got a problem with me then by all means so. Yeah, when you were at Celtic was there was there pressure from above for the manager to play a certain way. No. You you don't think there ever was. No. But 
when a manager come in, he wasn't playing how you have played. Oh, you play seven hundred games. You know exactly how the Celtic fans want to be played. Did you go and tell him? It was it was hard because who would that be? I would never go above a manager in at Celtic. No, I'm above, to the manager. I'm. To the manager, we probably had conversations with a couple of managers of what we got well the season before, how it went, and then we had managers like Lenny come in. Lenny knew what the club was about. Yeah. Came all the way through the youth system as well, so he knew what they wanted. And then you had Brendan coming in, you had Gordon, you had Tony Mowbray, and you had Ronnie Dylan. And all had different ways and means, and they want to play. But at Brendan, at the end, I probably learned more from Brendan at the end, coming to the end of my career, thinking right, I need to start to switch on here to understand yeah. how I want to go into management as well. So I think that was a huge, a huge one for me when I was younger. I was probably a little bit more naive. Gordon signed me as an attacking midfielder, and then quickly realised I couldn't score. So I made me into that holding midfielder, which was brilliant on him because it yeah. prolonged my career probably a lot longer at Celtic than what I expected. Yeah. And which national team? Is there is there any way the fans want to see the team play? Just win games. Just win. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, the, the lads in are playing brilliant. We're playing 3-4-3 three, three with Steve. Mm. I've never played a back three with Scotland, really. So it's been good that Steve's came in and he's had his own ways and own, own means as well that he wants to play in. The, the strength and depth in the squad now is really, really good. And Steve's going to have an absolute headache trying to pick 23 people going to Germany. Yeah. Because going through the whole team, you've got a lot of players playing in the English Premier League at the top level. A couple in Scotland playing at Rangers and Celtic as well. So, no, it's going to be a good competition. I'm, I'm intrigued to see um, the ones that he does pick. Well, I'm sure you're going to be out there. You're going to be busy working with the media, aren't you? Uh, it depends if I've got a job or not. <laughs> but yeah. at the same time... I would love to go over. It'd be huge for me. I've done a lot bit of the media recently, and to do the Scotland games as well, it'd be great to go over and actually see what it's about. And never been to a Euros or a World Cup, so it'd be good to see what the it Scotland might not fans are. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, 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 he's he's, out he's English, man. <laughs> he's <laughs> outnumbered today, Scott. You can't have this. Hey. Need a couple of Euros and finals, have you? Hey. <laughs> Talk about sixty-seven again. <laughs> Oh, 66, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Empire Munich fans were singing that last night. Well, I thought it was quite what were they was coming home. Coming home. I heard that. To really? Me. That, that did put a smile on my face, if I'm mm. being honest. Very uh, good. Very good. Um, what do you well, think your chances are? Should win. The World Cup? The Euros. The Euros. Euros. I, think they got a, I think England will have the squad to win mm. Euros. I think if he gets it right. I, I can see Portugal being a threat. Fra- France. Yep. Scotland ish. <laughs> That's it. How do you think we'll get on the first game, Germany, at home? Scotland, not you. I think you should surprise them. I mean, they're a mess at the moment, aren't they? Mm. To be fair, we're playing some good stuff. I'd like to have seen us when we went over to Spain. Yeah. That goal counting. Yeah. For the next yeah, yeah. 15 minutes it's to Scott see how the goal. Spanish dealt with that, but also to see how yeah. like, Steve and the lads dealt with the pressure as well, all beating them at home, then going away from home as well. At the, at the, Proper set a good yeah. tone for the lads it's going into it. Free hit, isn't it? For you I guys. No, I mean you, you've done your job. Like getting never it. really been there, so if they can get out of the group, it'd be unbelievable. Yeah. Germany, Switzerland, and Hungary yeah. in the group. What did you make of the nine draw? points? Eh? Simple. When well, ain't the end of the world? I mean, they're gonna. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah. It could have been a lot worse. I mean, a lot of them Scottish players are playing in more competitive leagues than a lot of them teams. Yeah. That's yeah. Them players in them teams. The one good yeah. thing I noticed about Scotland now. The squads came together really, really well. Yeah. And like they all work hard for each other and they've all got each other's back, which yeah. is a good thing. And that's down to the manager, isn't it? It's huge, yeah. It's team spirit's the best Everything. thing in football. If you've got team spirit, then you will run that extra ten percent for somebody else that's beside you. Yeah. Are you how happy are you to see <clears> the success balancing it with is there any sort of a tinge of sadness that it that it, you weren't still playing in this team? <laughs> right at the end when Steve came in, Steve Steve was like, what are you thinking? And I just retired with Alec. And he was like, never say you're going to retire. You never know. And I probably should have just went, oh, Steve, I'll come back for a couple more games. But uh, no, it, my time had been it had gone. We never made a Euros or a World Cup. And you don't want that old guy in the middle of the park still trying to go, oh, I can still play football and stuff and play at this level, which I can't anymore. And I know that. And once that goes, and Tim will know as well, as soon as you think you've you're done. You are done. Yeah. Oh, you're done. I was done in my head before my body stopped. My body's still not too bad. But my head was yeah. gone years ago. <laughs> yeah. 
But you could be valuable to for him, Clarky, as well if you if you travelled with the with the group. He's got a couple of younger coaches as well. Yeah, he's got James Morrison and that in there as well. So no, it's good that he's got that little bit of experience with himself and his older coaches and then a few of the younger coaches as well might need you to shave your hair back off to get in there and intimidate someone <laughs> <laughs> it's staying now because if I shave it off now it might never grow back again <laughs> um, you mentioned some of the some of the um, Scotland players there yep. um, Callum McGregor obviously is having a, a, a great impact great great season for Celtic as mm. well do given your experience of playing only in Scotland yep. Do you think Callum McGregor should consider leaving Celtic to further no. his career? And you're not going to say he's not going to say that. Never. Yeah, he's never going to tell him to never. leave. Is I he? think yeah. Callum had the opportunity when Brendan went to Leicester, and when he stayed uh, at Celtic at that time, he's gone nowhere. Cal's been there since he's been 12 year old. He's never going to leave the club. He loves the club, supports the club. He wants the best for the club, and he's captain now, so he can't leave. So that's him done and dusted. But no, Cal's brilliant, and he's a role model to every player that comes through as well, and also to the younger ones yeah. as well. And that that's a huge thing for the club. They want to bring the younger players through, but also show they're not just a selling club to mm. everybody that they can keep them like him, Jamesy Forrest as well. So it's good that they've got those ones that have been there and there about. Then I'm one, then one club men, then yeah. one club men, a yeah. dying breed. Oh, Especially in, the, in this day and age. Celtic's got two, James and Cal, and the, the two of them have been unbelievable for the club. But you can imagine they could probably go down the road and make a lot more money. Yeah. But they've enjoyed their time and they love it. And both of them are from close by as well. So it, it makes huge sense for them to stay at the club. In um, in Europe, where do you put Celtic? It's a hard one because I've just found out this record that we've just hit. Yeah. Uh, Longest run of a British side without a win. Fifteen in the games League. in the Champions League. I probably started that. If I'm being honest, I think it was maybe my last. Was it my last season? I can't even remember. So, Champions League's a different level, mm. and we always found it hard going away from home in Champions League. But we had a not bad record at home. Yeah, and it is getting harder and harder. And the amount of money that's going into England and going into other countries prepared to what there is in Scottish football is extremely hard at this time but they'll keep punching above their weight and I'm sure Brendan will want that opportunity next year to go and put that uh, to right that's for sure What about a size of club? Size of club is huge like, where, where, where are we putting it in Europe? In Europe I'd say top 10 Top Easy. 10? Yeah I think fan base Yeah, you've got You've got ignorant people like me yeah who, I, who, I get who, that users yeah we but we're not trying to be disrespectful no i get that understand. don't understand we, the whole we know how big football. rangers and celtic are yeah. don't get me wrong we know but we just don't know how big until we <clears throat> i think the only way you would really i think a lot of english people and players and that would find that out is if rangers and celtic went into the premier league yeah and i think as i say celtic's got sixty thousand season ticket holders we've got twenty eight thousand on standby they could probably double their stand if uh, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. size of the stadium if they went down in England. And we've got so many Irish fans that come over, we've got so many Scottish fans and fans all over the world, which is yeah. exceptional. And no matter where any of the lads go, and you speak to them, they're always recognised, they're always there and they're about where probably if you're maybe a mid-table player in the English Premier League, you go away to Dubai, none of the lads will get noticed where all the Celtic lads are getting battered back and forward probably. But it's... It's just a different breed. They love the club. They support them through thick and thin. And some of the fans are mental. Some of the fans are brilliant. And it's a great experience to like go around and have that honour to go and see them as well. Please excuse me. I just want to stop this episode quickly because Big Sam and I just want to say a huge thank you to you for supporting No Tippy Tappy Football, whether you are listening or watching or doing both. Sam and I absolutely love doing this podcast and we couldn't do it without you. So take a second, please, and subscribe or follow wherever you are watching or listening to us. We're also on Twitter, No Tippy Tappy Football, and we have our own YouTube channel. I know everybody says it, but it really would mean a lot to us and it means that we can keep getting bigger and better guests the more followers and the more subscribers we have. And then you can go and tell all your mates that you've done Big Sam a favour. So... Thank you for listening. Is there a better ground on a Champions League night to no. play at than Celtic Park? No, it's well. All the that's what the away team says. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You're killing me. <laughs> killing me. Uh, I, I've been battered in quite a lot. I've been away to. We went. Um, we had a couple of 
good starts in games. We were 1-0 up against mm. PSG away from home, got beat 7-1. We went 1-0 up against Barcelona, got beat 7-1. So um, we just angered them, to be perfectly honest. And yeah. they're fantastic teams. They had Mbappes, Neymars, and they had Messis and players like that. And to play against them, that's a lot of players go to Celtic to play in Champions League. They want that quality to go and play against the best players in the world and the best competition. And you do that, but at the same time, the support... In those games, whether it's Europa League, it's Champions League, is unbelievable. The nights, the experience. I don't know if you've ever been up. Yeah, I've been up. Not yeah. not for the. I haven't been to the old firm, but I've been up to scout uh, the Glasgow Derby. A scout a few players from Celtic, and um... did I get a mention? <laughs> 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 we know all about you. <laughs> um, how do you rate Brendan Rodgers since since he's gone back? I, I love Brendan. Like when I was there with Brendan, Brendan was unbelievable. He probably prolonged my career. For a couple of years, and the way they came in, diet, how you looked after yourself, training wise, how you maxed out everything you can possibly get from a short period of time because everyone knows a footballer's career is not that long. So, Brendan was brilliant. He came in, I met him in London when he first got the job, and I had that opportunity to sit with him to look at all his Liverpool training sessions, his Swansea sessions, and what he'd done, and how he done with Gerrards and Suarez's and uh, other top quality players back then so it, it was great to have Brendan come from Liverpool to Celtic at the time because we knew he almost won the Premier League with Liverpool at the time and we were going to get a fantastic manager so for us to have him come in it was it was huge for the club as well and he's a huge Celtic fan as well so that definitely helped with the supporters. Who's the greatest Celtic player of all time? Danny McBride. Danny's brilliant. Danny's he's probably still floating about the club. We used to go in and Danny must be in his 70s now and he used to just go in and use the gym and then just disappear. Gym? Yeah. He used to just go in and just use the gym. I am Danny. Just <laughs> go in, <laughs> use setups, then just disappear at the club. But it was the old style setups, like yeah. medicine ball behind him. Wow. Go and still doing what he does. So him, the Larson's up there as well. How many statues there around the ground? Uh, one. Danny? No, Billy McNeil. Billy McNeil. Yeah. So he obviously won 1967, he won that, so fantastic. Um, and he, he was a huge man at the time and huge player for the club at the, in experience. He was away, managed at Aberdeen and came into Celtic as well. He played and managed and he was captain. So King Kenny? Kenny was huge. Not a statue of Kenny though. No. <laughs> to be fair, that's only one statue at the club. You mentioned Ange before, obviously the the link is as well. Have you have you gone down to see him recently? There was rumours in the press. I was signing. Oh right, uh, brilliant! <laughs> I, I make a comeback. <laughs> no, I went down and seen them. I, I went for three days, and it was exceptional. See the standard of the training and the respect that the players have got for every coaching member as well was unbelievable. Because whether one of the coaches got the decision wrong or something they thought was, they just automatically didn't start moaning, throw their tools down and stop. They just reacted to wherever the ball was. And I don't know if that's down to Ange or if that's mm. down to the whole backroom staff, but it was brilliant to watch. And also people like Son, Son's standard in training, he sets tone early doors, whether it was a warm-up, it was passing, it was possession, or just getting after the ball. He was the main focus. Yeah. And it was, to be fair, for me, it was a delight to go and watch somebody at that level and see what he does. And it, it could be a big time player and just go yeah somebody else will do it but he, he actually wants to better himself and he wants to be top player he's done such a good job since he's been there in a short space of time because there was a real cloud over Tottenham mm -hmm. for a, for three or four years because of the style of play um, defensive the fans that. don't mind the style of play as long as they're yeah. winning but I mean they were top of the league at Christmas with Jose but as soon as the, the results stopped coming the performances were getting crit to criticised so you know you talk about Big clubs, and there is some big clubs um, in England at the moment. Huge football clubs without yeah. a playing identity. Mm. And name names, Man United. <laughs> no, no, and he was going to say it. I didn't need. To, I just wanted to hear it. I, I didn't need to say it, did I? <laughs> just for I think you, you need a playing identity. If you're mm. a huge club like Manchester United now. Tanner Hag will possibly argue we has not enough time, but I would always point to the fact that Andrew's look at Unai Emery at Aston Villa, look at Ange Postacoglu in a short space of time. It's a clear identity of how they want to go about and play the, play the game. So, yes, everyone can argue. Ange can still argue that it's not about, I haven't got the players I want. You know, you can't do it all at once. There's a transfer windows now. You have to wait for the windows to open to strengthen you and have your full squad. But I still think you need to have 
some sort of player and identity. Yeah. You could have different personnel come in there and change, you know, little bits of their game, and and they've all everyone's got a different quality. Um, but you tweak it, but you need to know how you're going to do it. I mean, it's a clear identity of Postecoglou, and every Tottenham fan and player have bought into it. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, which gives him a chance because he's he's authentic as well. When you when you look at him interviewed, I mean, he's, you know him. I don't know him. He's like he is when he talks to the press as he is when he talks to Scott he's at the male, training ground. He's the exact same all the way. You, the want, one, the you want to have a drink with that man, season. don't you? You want to go and have a beer with him. And then I think they'd be the exact same. same. Yeah, but <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah. Talk about football and how we do things. And yeah. He speaks really well. As in, like, I went and spoke to him. He spoke brilliantly to me as well. But he speaks very good in the media. And yeah. I think that's the main well, He's a student thing. of the game as well. Yeah. And he knows exactly what he wants. And he tells his coaching staff what sessions he needs to be, needs to be done. Mm. And the boys had that respect and that concentration level because he knows that he needs to do it in a short space of time. They haven't got a lot, lot of time. You know, there's no, there's no long term without a short term getting being right as a manager. So they need to listen, but it needs to be focused. They need to be taught and they need to be taught quickly. And if they're going to be talking, they're going to be messing around and there's not a full concentration, it's going to take a longer period. So I would suggest that Man United now, you, you get someone who's going to, teach these boys quickly if they don't want to listen you get rid of them and that's another question that's another it's a lot of money to get rid of people though it is when and, there's and, a lot of them in the and no one wants them <laughs> it's hard <laughs> it's hard especially when he's brought in quite a few of them as well like it's, could he hold his hands up and if, he, exactly. if it's still Ten Hag and get rid of the ones that he brought oh, in oh we on Ten Hag now are, we, are, are, <laughs> is, are, you, are you presuming that he's going Do you I just think go? I just think he's he's under a huge amount of pressure I think the way they limped out of the Champions League, I think that group, they should have qualified with Bayern Munich. Um, I mean, with respect to Galatasaray and Copenhagen, who have done brilliantly to qualify. I mean, it's Man United. You look at Man United's budget prepared to them. Yeah. And then you just automatically think, Man U, Bayern Munich, going to qualify for that group. Copenhagen's yeah. done unbelievable to finish second. Fair yeah. play to them. But They spent a billion pounds. Nigh on a billion pounds, Man United. And he would argue it's not all his money. It's not all his players. But I would say... Yeah, but you have spent probably 400 million mm. on players you knew. Yeah. And if I'm the owner, I'm saying to him, what about these players? Why aren't they performing? You know them. You brought them to the club. So when the transfer window opens in January, would I, if I'm an owner, would I be giving them any more money to spend? No, not to Dina. I would not give him a pound. <laughs> How long is he going to last, do you think? Do you think we'll give him to the end of the season? Probably, because who else is there? You know, to, That's to one good in. thing about Man United. They do give the managers time. Mm. And... Tech has been he's been there for what fifteen months now, and he's brought in a lot of players. And the thing is, if he can turn it within the next couple of months, you never know. By all means, but watching them now, they're they're not great to watch. They're not a Tottenham. They're not a Man City. They're not controlling games. Uh, but the team that I probably most enjoy watching now is Spurs. Me too. They, they get after players. The 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 defensive line's exceptional. Yeah, and you can see they're already like just waiting for the ball to go over the top, and they're going, "That's me v you. I'll beat you." And they've yeah. got that faith in each other as well that they'll leave somebody 1v1 and they'll go and worry about their own man or worry about the area that they've got to deal with as well. And I think that's a great way to go and play the game as well. Yeah. It's exciting at the top of the Premier League right really? now. Who wins it? <gasps> I still say Man City win it. <laughs> Give me your top four. Top four. Villa are flying in it. Oh, I, I, really hope, brilliant job. I really hope Villa make the top four. It'd be great to see. Would. I, I think Man City will probably end up kicking on as they do every year for the second part of the season. I, I think Spurs will be in top four as well. Then it's up for grabs at last place. It's got to be Liverpool and Arsenal, you you have to say, are we in there? I think it's going to be so tight. And Man United don't do anyone any favours and the coefficients of the Champions League because mm. if Newcastle get beat as well you know, and go out at this stage, no one is actually sure what the coefficients of that European competition is. But I think it's Italy it might be a threat. They might have the extra team over the English teams. Yeah. Because the top five makes a hell of a difference. Yeah. Um, so a couple, a couple of the clubs you mentioned there, uh, Liverpool. Um, obviously, you've had the connection with Virgil Van Dijk. Um, he said that you helped him a lot at Celtic, and that you're one of the best captains he ever played for. It's a decent compliment. Um, where does he rank in your think in your all time? Virgil is in the best centre half I played with. He was up in Scotland and he played at seventy yeah. percent. He cruised it, and I mean it was ridiculous. He, we left on one on one at the back and Brendan was there and Lenny was there and we just 
left him to deal with, sorry it was Lenny, but just left him to deal with whoever it was. And it was amazing because he, he would beat them to the ball. He's strong on them. He's brilliant on the ball as well, driving forward. And we had the luxury. He would run through half the team. He'd hit free kicks. He was scoring free kicks. And we were like, just sign this guy for three million pounds. <laughs> but Le- when Lenny first signed him, he came over from Holland and we played Champions League qualifier in Kazakhstan or somewhere. And it was his first game. And Fudge, it didn't play that well. Didn't play him the next game, but then from then he just went, got himself better, fitter, yeah. stronger, quicker. And you can see why he's probably the best centre half in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people run him. Not a lot of people beat him one v ones. He's good in the air. He can hold a high line as well. He's got everything you want as a centre half. Credit to Southampton. They were they were the team. We all, we, all, we all looked, mm-hmm. and you all discredited. To be fair, the 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 Scottish League. I think it's he because he had no one. Exactly. That was a stroll in it. I yeah. never saw him. He's a centre back. He never headed the ball. Yeah, he didn't have to. He just brought it down his chest and played. And he just created. played. He found it too easy yeah. and they took the plan and then they they get the big bucks off Liverpool. So credit to Southampton. Yeah, very much. I think that's such a good compliment. The best captain. The best captain he's ever played for. Um, <laughs> that was probably when he was at Celtic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's left. He's had a few others. <laughs> um, you. Uh, fairly famous in football for your um, I'm thinking of a nice way of putting it Tim winding up of other players particularly I'm thinking about when you played in old firm games you really liked winding up those Rangers players (laughs) any in particular that you that you um, enjoyed winding up I had a few over the years I had a, a lot of good battles and I enjoyed that side of the game, trying to get into somebody's head and just saying, come on, let's see what you've got then. Whether it was, he might have been technically better than me or quicker or that, but I'd try and get in his head as much as I possibly could. I'd be like, come on, 1v1, mate, let's see what you've got, run me. And then if he did, fair play to him, but then I'd try and vice versa, go the other way as well. But that no, was part of my game, it was who I was. I, as I say, as I played part of my villain really well throughout my whole career. And when I came off the park, I was quite chilled. I was quite relaxed and never held a grudge against anybody. And I was speaking to Scotty Arfield that played with Rangers just the other day. It was quite amusing. So we've done, we've turned up to do an Aberdeen Rangers thing. So he's turned up in the two. Everyone's looking going, they've had a lot of battles together. And I was like, Scotty, come on. And he's like, I loved your speech play. I was like, he gave me a wee bit back as well. And Scotty was a good player going forward and always wanted to try and score goals and that. And uh, it was it was good to have that, like, yeah, you give me a little bit and I'll give you a bit and we'll see who comes out on top afterwards. And then after that, you go and shake people's hand. But my two best mates played with Rangers. So Kevin Thompson and Stephen Whitaker, we grew up at Hibs. We came all the way through. They two have signed for Rangers one season and I signed for Celtic the same season. And we used to, after games, go and meet up with Scotland. Nobody could understand how we'd jump in the same car and go and meet up with Scotland. I'd have a Celtic track here and they would have the Rangers track and everyone would be like, that's frowned upon. It's like, that is my two best mates that, I, mm. that I've hung about with for so many years and being there and like fans were like, you can't do that. You'd be walking down the street trying to jump in the car and that they'd be like looking going, no, it's not. So, no, nah, it, was, it, it was different. But no, nah, even playing against Kevin, Kevin played centre midfield. And the two of us would never speak the week beforehand. Not one word. We would kick crap out of each other. And then after the game, we'd shake each other's hand and walk down the tunnel. That was it. So it was mutual respect between both of us. If Sam was here, we could have um, got him talking to you about El Hadj Juf. Because um, obviously you signed him a good few times. Yes, yeah, you had some battles with him, didn't you? I really you? didn't like him. I don't know what it was. He had that little bit of arrogance about him as well. And I think he wanted to wind me up as much as what I wanted to wind him up. And to be fair, I got a celebration out of uh, scoring against him and he was standing still and I've just put my arms out. <laughs> it was the best booking in my whole career. Uh, but no, we had a lot of battles over the years and I, I enjoyed that to be fair. And he was a good player back in the day, but I wanted to just show him what I had and what I was about. Do you have any battles with anyone that you particularly remember or you enjoyed battling against? Yeah, always. North London derbies were the best. But, you know, you have, you go having a battle with one of the best teams we've ever seen. <laughs> and my opposition were Patrick Vieira and, and Emmanuel Petit, which... How did you go on with, with that? Uh, with Dennis Burkhan just at the top of them. I mean, it was difficult. And and like Scott said, you have to find another way. And the, the other way was as soon as they come out of that tunnel, 
uh, at the dressing room in the tunnel, and no cameras back then. You just start with them, the verbals, you know, trying to knock them off, knock them off, uh, the, off the off the off the game plan, because Patrick would just stare straight and just say, just ignore that idiot. And um, Emmanuel used to take the bait. So as long as you took one of them, uh, take one. Yeah, it, it's better than none. <laughs> but um, no, Patrick was just immune to it, and um, he would give it and and he would take it. But you know, you you have to try and find a different way when there's a technical mismatch of your team to the to the opposition. You know, it's like Luton now, for instance, in the Premier League, in that tight ground. They have to find a different way collectively. Individually, they're not going to win any football matches. Um, but together, they can they can produce something. You know. they've, they've been tight. It's obviously 2-1 against City. Yeah. That's such a close game against Arsenal. Arsenal well. and, and that was a good game. Liverpool, yeah. Watching that, it was fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, oh, they've done brilliant. It's at home. That's going to hopefully get them the points as well. Yeah, Nice and tight ground. Everyone together, the fans on the... But to be fair, the fans have been brilliant for them, watching them, they cheer them for 90 minutes, whether they're winning or losing. It's brilliant that way. I think they know what they are, Luton fans. They know they know they're know they struggling. They need, they know they have to have a miracle to stay in the Premier League. Um, but miracles happen. We've seen it happen before, but it's going to be an uphill task. Kenilworth Road is going to be the, the key to it. It is tight ground. I mean, I think it is, when you look at it, it's no space. I mean, you look at it, it's, there's, a, there's a rule, there'll be a restriction on how wide, and how, but I don't know when the last time they measured it. But I'm sure every single game it gets tighter and tighter <laughs> because it, the games are getting more difficult. They are com- competitive in every game they play. And like you say, the odd goal here and there, but you know, just hope they don't go down getting patted on the back. Nothing worse than that. You know, yeah. saying you were unlucky, you was in every game. Who cares? You're in the championship next year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the, the the city game, particularly in the first. Obviously, obviously they took the lead in the, in the city yeah. game as well. And city were on the back of a the back of a, well, a bad bad run by their standards. Um, Jack Grealish, obviously, I always like to ask you because obviously and mm. you you know him, you you worked with him. He's getting criticism recently. Graham Souness and Stuart Pearce um, have been criticising mm. in particular. Um, say and they've been saying he doesn't offer enough. And I don't. I I, mm. I mean I've watched him every single city game since since he's signed. They complain about him going sideways. They complain about him going backwards what do you make of it well I think they're wrong um I think Graham has done this for a number of years now because he says who would want to be the most foul player in the in the Premier League it's obviously because you can't see it early enough and he and he keeps getting caught on the ball but I would argue that when you're trying to link the play from back to front he holds the ball up Jack he protects it and he takes you out the field by getting fouls as well because he gets his big old calves in, in between him and the opposition He's, he sits into people. He creates a melee. So what I mean by that is three or four players around him all the time. And he finds a pass and he releases it inside to, to Kevin De Bruyne or Gundogan last year. You know, he releases it and he creates space elsewhere on the pitch. Uh, he's not a docker. He's not a bottle of pop who's going to run past people and get you off your seat. But he's got ability. He sees a pass. He's clever. Um, and I think that was a big goal. I think he needed a big moment. And even though it was at Kenilworth Road and they expect to beat them, they haven't won in four. You know, so I was a huge, huge winner for, for Jack and I was pleased for him and I think he, he would go on from there. No, he is a top level player and I, I've said it many, many times. If Gareth Southgate doesn't put him and Phil Foden in the England team, I think we're missing out and I think you will regret it. You know, you've got to go on the front foot. You've got to, you've got to really embroider your strengths and your strengths are players like that. You know, he, he really is top draw, really, really is. I would rely on him, and I'm sure Pep does, more than uh, Doku. I think Doku is good. I really do. I think he he's, he gives them something different. A little bit Leroy Sane is where he's a bit more direct and quick and goes past people. But I think he will. He knows Jack, and I think he trusts him. And I think he, he likes thinking footballers, and I think that's what exactly what Jack Grealish is. I think he knows exactly what the manager wants. I've worked with him. I know I know what you send him a message and he, and he takes it onto the pitch. So, no, I can't speak highly enough of him. I think the criticism he gets, I think he will not be bothered about that. I think he'll want to roll his sleeves up and prove him wrong. Yeah. He's a person that thrives off that as well. Yeah. Like, like he'll probably go, yeah, sure, Graham, Stuart, I'll just go and start show you, start scoring goals, start getting assists. And the amount of assists and goals he scores in big games speaks for himself. And Pep's not paying 100 million for somebody that just goes sideways, let's no. be honest. He'll see it every day in training. He'll see what he does. He'll see he sets standards with himself and how he looks after himself as well. He's, he's there, he's reliable. And as he says, he's a player that always wants the ball. 
So you are going to get filled. You'll see players going hiding, but he's not one of them. No. He takes it in that tight area. You know, he takes it with back to, back to people. Yeah. You know, he takes the kicks. Just, you know, he, yeah, he, he can look predictable. He can look a little bit off the left and then go sideways there. But he's doing it for a reason. He's creating that melee. He keeps the ball. He waits for people to come onto him and then he just releases for other people to have the space. And Alvarez and, and the like are, are relishing that at the moment. So, no, he's, I think he's doing a really good job. I really do. I think there's more to it than just when he's got the ball. I think he's a, a very good thinking man's footballer. I did an event with Kevin De Bruyne the other day. Is he um, back? So it was called An Evening with Kevin De Bruyne. It was for City's charity and he was there and we we had about an hour with him. So we, we got to talk to him loads. Oh, he looks fresh, Tim. Does he? Like, Do his he, charts better? Tim's or Kevin's? Um, Kevin. Well, Kevin's, got, in English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's got a very dry sense of humour, but so is Tim, to be fair. They, they'd probably really get on. Um, and I said to him in the most polite way, Kevin, you look really fresh. Like you, And, and he mm. said he felt like he'd needed, in hindsight, he felt like he'd needed the time off because he'd been playing so much football for so long. And he said that he's, he feels refreshed and he's looking forward to coming back. Um, a refreshed Kevin De Bruyne Second, in January. Uh, when? Do you know when? He said New Year. He didn't say specifics. He said he's hoping to be back in the new year. So Yeah, well, could be March then. Do <laughs> you know what? Even if he comes back in March refreshed. <laughs> Too late, isn't it? No, I don't I think, think you so. might. I think you might think... need the injection before that. You think? <laughs> well, it's going to be tight. It's going to be, this is the best Premier League we've seen for a long time. Most competitive. It's wide open. Yeah. Six teams there that can really go and win it now. But that is a special player, isn't it? Oh. De Bruyne. I mean, it's just... He's we, a I haven't played the game, you look at him and you go, wow, this is just incredible what he does. He's a difference from Man City being a very good team to being exceptional. Mm. The balls he sees, his ability to whip a ball in as well. See that ball when they lay it off and he just whips in first time. Everyone knows what he's doing. Yeah. But he just puts it on right on the money every opportunity he can. And he scores big goals in big games as well. He's a big game player. He said, I said, you know, when you've won everything in the in the game that, you know, that you can win, what is motivating you to come back from an injury and what is motivating you to want to win again? And he literally just said, I, I want to be the best. I want to be the best. So even at, in his early 30s, coming back from an injury, he said he's refreshed. He says he wants to be the best. Oh, I can't wait. To he is the best though. Isn't he? So he's done that, hasn't he? He's ticked that box. He just wants to continue being the best. It's like Messi. Was he? Did he stay all night drunk and? No, it oh. was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Smashed him at a, a city <laughs> event in December. Um, no, but what he did. I'm refreshed. Yes, he because it was an evening with Kevin De Bruyne. He picked the menu for the food. So there was 200 people there that had paid a lot of money because it was all for the charity. Um, and he'd picked the food. And when he sat down, he said he said he was on our table with him, and he said. Um, I didn't realise I was picking the food for everybody. He said, I thought I was picking the food for me and it was the healthiest menu you've ever seen. <laughs> like, yeah, it was like fish for the fish for the um, the main course and it was soup for the starters. And then he said he felt bad because everybody in the room How was eating exactly. the, healthiest, ah. the healthiest food um, around. Yeah, well, he's um, a top professional. You're never, ever going to see him on the front page, are you? Nope, you, family oh, man. He's top. I mean, that's, what I was, that's why I was joking about him drinking. Yes. He's not, <laughs> Although, like, he's not like me. Not like you. Yeah, Do you like a fun. drink? Do I like it? Uh, now and then. What's your Christmas going to look like then? What is what is it? It's going to be enjoyable. Okay. <laughs> yeah. getting Kevin doing the menu. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. You and Tim will take not. over that one. We'll be fine <laughs> with that menu. What will your Christmas lunch be like? Uh, no, that'll be quite chilled. That'll be the dinner time is when I really come into my own. Okay. Um, Are you, you cook? No. Okay. I sit and eat. Nice, nice. Yep. Eating yep. Good, really important well. job. Just put the anchor down and that's me in <laughs> front of the telly. Kids can go and do their own thing. And I'll just wait for my food to hopefully come on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, you what will it what will a Christmas be like in the I'll be show at home. Would? I'm at home, yeah. I'm um yeah, just just a family. Just you know, it'd be about ten of us probably. And then um, New Year I'm gonna go to Spain. Oh lovely. Yeah. Break. Yeah. Golfing. Golf, yeah, I was about no, yeah. Just golfing. Golf, yeah. I'll play about four times in six days okay so not too many days how good are you let's see I'm, I'm going to compare your golf ask him what he went around today no I played yeah. I played alright yesterday I went around level par yesterday in, at the Berkshire yeah, so yeah. I know what that means he's a shark okay, That's okay. What how good are you not as good as him <laughs> <laughs> that's a six handicap <laughs> I've said to okay. well, I bet when I when we play, he turns up with a shaved head. <laughs> Just stand and stare at me. I'm ready for you. <laughs> we had 
had tubes on a couple of weeks ago who does the golf channel on YouTube. Yeah. So you should both. We should do a no tippy tappy. Tubes has been trying to get me on that, but has he? I've not played enough to get on that yet. So I'm staying quiet <laughs> until I text them back. <laughs> well, he wants to get Sam on as well, so maybe he's could you know. That could be a bad yeah. four ball. That. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. We always finish up with some quick fire, not so quick fire questions. So take you don't need don't need to be super quick. Um, we stopped calling them quick fire really because Sam takes about 10 minutes on every question. <laughs> so first of all, um, Van Dyke said that you used to play happy hardcore house music in the room when he was sleeping next door to you. First of all, is that true? And secondly, what is your favorite genre of music now? Still the same. Happy hardcore. I what love, is that? Like dance music. Uh, I love like uh, uh, 90s dance. Uh, <laughs> like, can I? Yeah, proper on the go. I used to put it on the change room to try and get myself up for games and stuff like that. And you see all the foreigners just headphones on just like sitting listening to R&B chilled out tunes but if I started to get Did you allow him to do that hey it's 2023 now you've got to <laughs> that's the thing now but we were, before games see whatever the lads wanted to do we always let them do whatever they wanted yeah but in and about the change rooms beforehand there was no phones it was like quite strict that way yeah. so everyone came together but just before the games by all means and do who set them mean. standards you we done all the rules and set everything. Then within the dressing room, not the coaching staff. No, the coaching staff just let yeah, us let take control it. of that, which was good. And to be fair, when I was manager, I let the lads do that as well. Yeah. And it's not a place a manager should be going in and trying to find the lads and stuff like that. But yeah, happy hardcore dance music, nineties classics. I'm your man, and a new verge used to be always room next to me, and he used to love asleep during the day, whether whenever it was, and I made sure he didn't sleep, so he was ready for the game. <laughs> <laughs> a bad man at times but yeah. I enjoyed that a little bit I used to just chap on my door going Brownie please just one wee bit <laughs> okay big man as long as you play well again I'll make sure <laughs> do anything for you what's you your know, choice old school hip hop I like okay yeah. oh you're going to 80s yeah uh, 80s 90s yeah more more 80s yeah I, li I like that my kids know all them old school Eric B and Rakim and stuff like that. they know all, every word rapper's delight and Amazing. They've, just been, they've just been brought up with it. So yeah. All good all good track. All good tunes. I like Paul Weller as well though. No. A little bit I loved a little bit of style council. You know, <laughs> so I'm varied, you know, I've got a good good, good blend. Yeah, it's the best way. To be fair, I do like Annie Lennox as well. Nice. So I'll go for Annie Lennox to Happy Hardcore and it's a big turnaround. Variety. I, I went to <laughs> I'll tell you a bad story. I went to go and see Annie Lennox live. And it was a night with Annie Lennox and she sung one song and she talked all about her life. Did you not uh, want to hear her talk about her life? No, no. not in the slightest. <laughs> we sat there, there was loads of seats, so I've turned up and I thought, Annie Lennox, because it's a bit older class, there'll be people sitting down. So I've sat down and it was me, the physio, and one of the little lads, because nobody else wanted to come with us at the time. I'm like, it should be okay, actually. Sat down, she came out and she sung me first song. And I'm like, here we go with her. Just sat down on the couch and just talked for 45 minutes continuously about childhood all the way through to what she is now. Then it stopped and I just walked out. <laughs> I couldn't deal with it. I was like, oh, come on. So what if she did the whole next 45 singing? Talked again. I just made sure that I stayed for the first couple of minutes and I thought, nah, I'm away. This is it. Me, I'm gone. Devastated. <laughs> It's devastating. The hundred fifty pound a ticket as well. You're on the next talk about a life. I could have Wikipedia there and find out. <laughs> I don't know if you'll ever be welcome to a future. No, concert. probably not. <laughs> <laughs> right, next one is if each of you could pick three other people from sport or music for a round of golf, who are you going for? Ooh. See, I love golf, right? Tiger and Rory are my heroes, mm. so I need to take them. Okay. Take them, so I'll no text them. I was going to say, yeah, you know both. Yeah, I just text them. <laughs> me, me and Tiger are like that. <laughs> um, and a DJ, David Guetta, probably. Oh, nice. I take David Guetta. I love David Guetta as well, to be fair. So, yeah, good blender. That is a right He, he could play the tunes yeah. where Tiger parties and Rory probably practices. <laughs> it's a great blender, and I'll probably go with Tiger and DJ, the DJ and we'll just watch Rory. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a four ball for you. Go for it. Brendan Rogers. Yep. Two years time. <laughs> Where's this gone? Dermot Desmond and Ross Desmond at Queenwood, which is one of the best golf courses you're ever likely to play. Queenwood's good. Jamie's there, isn't it? That's where Ross and Dermot are. Where's that? Yeah. 
and I then we can talk about that four ball up we can talk Morris. about the transition between <laughs> Brendan moving to Barcelona or retiring Brendan's and not you retiring. taking over the job Brendan's got three years so it's perfect Brendan will do a good job then if he goes to Barcelona by all means I'll try and go, go with him and <laughs> he speaks Spanish you know that remember me gaffer bilingual bilingual yeah nah, to be fair I'd definitely take the four ball up yeah. Just to say that I've been at Queens. And- yeah, it's nice. It's a good yeah. course. Yeah, you enjoy it. It's all golf talks. Just going right, right over me, Ed. Right over me, Ed. <laughs> um, will- Can you get off that quick enough? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's your handicap then? <laughs> what is the highest you can have? <laughs> um, will Eric Ten Hag finish the season as Manchester United manager? Yes. Yeah, I think he will. Okay. Um, by default. Um, because there'll be, uh, I'm not sure who else is out there mid-season to go into a big job like that. And I think big well. Sam is out there waiting. Yeah. <laughs> big Sam, yeah. He would love it. <laughs> I'd love it. He yeah. would love <laughs> it. Kevin Keegan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is Sean Dyche the most underrated manager currently in the Premier League? Well, yeah, not by yeah. me. Okay. Uh, I would say so, yeah, by the media. Yeah. I think he's done a good job with Everton everywhere. Burnley beforehand is exceptional. Especially with their budget, it just, it's just been amazing. Um, and Daishi, you know, against all the odds, siege mentality, fixed bayonets, and all that. Ten points deduction. Wants to That's tell you probably about pulled it. them together a little bit more. You know what yeah. I think? He's he, probably went. No, we'll sort this out. The job was exactly the same as what it is mm. now to when it was at the beginning of the season. Stay in the league. It's just made it a little bit more exciting for him because they were cruising when it was boring for Everton fans. They must have thought, "Wow, we're going to be mid-table. What's the point of that?" And I all of a sudden, they, they, they pick, the <laughs> pick 10 points off and make it more exciting. And, uh, you know. Yeah, I think the Everton fans are saying, thank you. Thank you for making it yeah. more exciting what, for us. What would they, 23 points Yeah. at this stage, if they hadn't, if they got their 10 points back. Amazing, yeah. amazing job he's done. But that's what he is. That's what he does. He never gets, he's calm. He never, ever gets excited about it. He doesn't get too high, he doesn't get too low. And I think... If the, the ownership takes over and it's, it's a success and they give him a little bit more money, why don't they push for Europe? Why, I mean, I, he's capable of doing it. He's not just a firefighter keeping teams in the league. That's what the job's what he's been given. And, that, you know, you, you, you're you handed a deck of cards and unfortunately the deck of cards he's always had is not great. So he's had to be very conservative with how he plays them. But I think he's capable, you know, with a different group of players. That group now know exactly what their job is. An art of a good manager is to get the best out of the individuals, and I think Sean's doing that. Yep. Nice. And then my last question for you: How far is Scotland going to go in the Euros? Hopefully, out of the group stage. No. That'd be lovely. Yes. I give them a chance out of the group. I really do. Looking at the group, like especially Germany as well. Yeah. Not being hitting on all cylinders at this moment in time. I think we've got a right good chance, and I'm sure Steve will be sitting there thinking the exact same as well. I obviously, know what I talk about that to the media one game at a time and stuff which is the right thing to do but mm. for me they'll go away they'll have a couple of weeks off season training make sure they're ready for it and I'm sure all the lads will cherish it as well because it's the first time for a long time they've been in the Euros so uh, we'll, we'll look forward to it Who's the key players they need fit? McGinn McGinn McGregor McTominay Shea Adams as well mm. Yeah that's probably your core of your team that you really want there make sure that they're fit and then uh, to be, to Tierney be, Tierney and Robles that's it's huge because the way they two play on that left side one overlaps one underlaps one sits in another one goes forward the amount of crosses assists they get as well from that side and they, they just run teams into the ground the two of them have got great stamina but also great quality going higher up the park and Robles playing top quality with, with Liverpool and the wee man's over in Spain enjoying himself and now he's just coming back for an injury so yeah. he'll be looking forward to getting a run of games and being in that squad. Yeah. I love John McGinn. Talking about underrated, I just John oh, Kieran as well. Kieran's like Kieran's probably one of the quickest players I've ever played with. And that I've played with a lot of quick players, but see over five, ten yards, his strength, his body, his low sense of gravity, a bit like McGinn that way. But he's got one V one, he's exceptional defending as well. And he, he puts his body on the line and that's probably how he ended up getting injured as well. He was willing to put his body on the line to whether to go and go to three points or to play an extra couple of games. I don't know if, I can, if it's coming through onto the podcast now, but there's a car outside the studio currently playing. Right. Tunes on it. I was thinking. Stop plays <laughs> in the dressing room. It's actually my motor. It's just <laughs> on it. It's, just up. It's, it's his chauffeur. <laughs> as soon as I heard it, I 
was going to say, Tim, this is what he listens to. This is exactly it. I would it. say it's my CD, but we're a wee bit past those days now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank and you very much. Much today. appreciated. It's we been really appreciate enjoyable. You. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Pleasure. As always. Thank you. I think Sam's back next week. Cool. Um, you probably know. Are you in next week? I oh, know. No, no exactly. I think Sam's back. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll see you in the new year when Good. he's on his next holiday. Have a wonderful cool. thank Christmas. Thank you. Have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you very much for, for coming and joining us. You as well. Us. Much appreciate. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. Sam is back from his jollies next week. <laughs>